Hello, it's Natalie again, and tonight I'm going to be coloring this picture of a tiger that I drew. Uh, as always, I'll be using Prismacolor colored pencils. For those of you who don't know what Prismacolor pencils are, they're basically high quality colored pencils. You can get them at craft stores such as Hobby Lobby and Michaels, and you can also find them on Amazon. The kind that I have, it came in a tin like this. They sell many different other sizes, and they have a lot of colors. So let's begin. For this tiger, I want to begin with the eyes because I love drawing eyes, as you, most of you guys know if you've seen my videos. I think the eyes are always a good place to start. So right now I'm just going to thin out the pencil lines so it doesn't blend in with the, pencil, with the colored pencil. And I'm going to start with a yellow color. And apart from yellow, the tiger also has some greens in its eyes, but right now I'm using a golden yellow to shade the eyes. And if you guys have questions, please feel free to ask them and I will answer them. Just so you know, I may not be able to see all the comments because they fly off my screen rather quickly, so if you have a question that you're dying to ask and it's been a while since you asked it and I haven't gotten to it, please ask it again. Oh, Miranda, I have drawn an owl before on Quirky Mom. If you want to see the video, go to the videos tab on Quirky Mama's page and look at the section that says Drawing with Natalie and you will find it.
Okay, I'm almost done with the eyes. What I'm going to do before I finish them is I'm going to take some white paint and apply it to the eyes to create reflections. This way the eyes will pop and it will enhance the picture overall. Just a few little lines or dots of white paint should do it. And this is a, a great tool to use, just regular acrylic paint. It's super cheap. You can add it on top of drawings, no matter what the medium is, like if it's ink, crayon, uh, colored pencil, anything. You can add white acrylic paint on top to help enhance it. And I'm also adding a little line at the bottom of the eye, just to give it a little bit more reflection. There we go. Since I, finished the, since I finished the eyes, I'm going to color in the black around the tiger's eyes, and I'll branch out from there. It's been a few episodes of this series since I got a new black pencil, but I see a lot of you guys are still commenting about it. I just find it funny. Um, I'd say I wouldn't have done this drawing if I still had the short pencils because uh, the tiger has so many black stripes on it. I'd say it's almost urgent that I would get a black pencil like this to color in the stripes of a tiger because it'd be really difficult to do it with a tiny little pencil. Actually, yes, all the drawings that I've colored on Quirky Mama, they're all drawn by me. I just draw them ahead of time just to save time in the video because in, for, what, for a one hour segment, I can't fit in drawing and coloring. I have done some videos where I've drawn a face, however, the coloring on that was simple you know, in black and white, so it wouldn't take like two or two and a half hours to do. I have to do everything in an hour, so that's why I cut out the drawing.
uh, Courtney, the white pencil that I use is a Prismacolor colored pencil. All of these colored pencils are Prismacolor. Uh, Sandy, what makes the Prismacolor so good is the fact that they blend so smoothly with each other. And this is something that's really hard to find in cheaper colored pencils. Uh, a lot of other colored pencils, you can't really blend them in with each other. However, with Prismacolors, if you color over one color with a different color, you can blend it in with the color. You can blend two colors together. I mean, you can't just like put down black, like really bold, and then put down something like yellow and blend it lightly. But if you do it right, you can blend them together and they're super smooth. They're probably the best colored pencils out there for purchase. Uh, Tylox, these are Prismacolor Premier pencils. Jessica, you can buy Prismacolor pencils at craft stores such as Hobby Lobby and Michaels, or you can get them on Amazon. Oh, another place that you can get these pencils is at Walmart. Uh, Walmart, they actually carry them in the back wherever they keep their art supplies. It's usually next to the greeting cards and party supplies. Um, I recently saw, uh, found that out as well. And one time I went to Walmart like in the past few weeks and I saw them there and I was like, oh, didn't know that. And I have also seen you guys comment that you purchased them there, so that's good to know. Especially if you don't have a Hobby Lobby or Michaels near your house. But Amazon also is a good alternative because they'll deliver. And a piece of advice if you guys go into craft stores to purchase Prismacolor pencils, always go on the website of the craft store, like if it's Hobby Lobby or Michaels, go on their website and look for their 40% off coupon. They have these coupons that you can use on any product in the store and get 40% off. So you can buy a large set of Prismacolor pencils and get 40% off the entire thing. It's quite magical. I, I always use those coupons whenever I go. Like that, that's a must. Like I, I won't go to Hobby Lobby if I can't get a coupon because you save so much money shopping with the coupon. Uh, Kira, I've been drawing since middle school and what got me into drawing was the fact that I really liked looking at art and I really 
enjoy the um, like characters of like movies and games and things like that. So I would always want to draw characters because online I saw people draw characters and it was really cool. And like stuff like fan art, I see people draw characters from movies and TV shows and things like that. And I wanted to do that too, so I would sketch them. And it was fun for me, but since then it's evolved into more than just drawing my favorite characters from like various, uh, various I guess like forms of entertainment. But uh, I guess that's really how it started. Um, I don't really draw like movie characters or anything like that anymore. But I guess I, I should at least acknowledge that that's how it started. I'm a senior in high school, by the way, guys. In case like, you're wondering. <laughs> Uh, Helen, yes, I use photographs for a lot of these drawings of animals that I don't draw as often. However, for this tiger, it's really easy for me to draw without looking at the photograph often because it's all coming back to me. I used to draw tigers a lot whenever like, I was in middle school. I think the end of middle school is where I drew a lot of tigers because I went to a middle school where the tiger was the mascot. So like, naturally you'd have a lot of like teachers and stuff asking me to draw tigers and like I drew it in art class I drew it for the yearbook there are tigers everywhere <laughs> so like a lot of the shading patterns for a tiger it, it's like it's really natural to me right now but for a lot of the things that I don't draw often I do have to look at photo references all the time for uh, one thing that I don't really have to look at references as much for or is people because I've drawn a lot of people and I understand like how the face works and stuff but I always try to look at references so I can like understand more of the face and understand how to do a better job at shading and things like that but like it's easier for me to draw people without a reference than it is for me to draw animals. Trina, that's wonderful that you and your kids are doing an, out, an art hour in the evening. I think that that's a really cool idea for like anyone because, especially whenever you have younger children, I think it's really important to introduce them to art and like even if your kids like grow up to be scientists or like anything that doesn't necessarily evolve involve art up front, I think art it's just good for the soul, it's good for the mind because it's just something. I mean, to be like. I guess to learn about art, you don't have to be an artist yourself. Like teaching your kids about art and getting them introduced to it, it's not just drawing. Like show them pictures of art, take them to museums. Um, I love going to museums. Whenever I was younger, like in elementary school, uh, my art class, we'd always go on field trips to some of the local museums. 
and that was a lot of fun because you get to see a lot more than just paintings and drawings. There's also sculpture and artifacts and you can see, show your kids how art plays such a critical role in our lives. Like if you go to a museum, you can see ancient pottery that was used for drinking and holding food and how they're finely decorated and how like, I mean, we may not think about it too much today, but like even the electronics that we have, there was extensive art involved with that. This was like the graphic design and the product design and everything. This is, art is really important. Uh, Jazz, I do have an Instagram. The link to that is in the video's description. Uh, I don't know if you can view it directly from the video player, but you'll, you should be able to find it. Uh, Desiree, I'm not too familiar with what Bible journaling is. Uh, if you could elaborate on what that is for me, I could tell you if these are good for that or not. Uh, Robin, <coughs> excuse me, Robin, yes, I have a reference photo that I'm using. It's just like one of the first results if you search tiger on Google Images. Uh, it should be really easy to find, but like it's just a generic picture of a tiger facing at the camera. Uh, I have to do it for understanding where the stripes go and what colors to use in different areas and things like that because I'm not very familiar with drawing tigers, even though I've drawn a few back in middle school. Um, at some points, like, I don't, I'm not looking at it because like, it's pretty straightforward just coloring in some stripes or things like that, but whenever I'm shading areas like the nose or the whisker, like, whenever I get to the mouth right here, I'll definitely have to look at the reference a lot to understand like, how to shade it and make it look like what it is. But just so you guys know, my goal is not to make a, a drawing that looks as close to the reference photo as I can. The reference photo is 
purely just that. It's a reference photo to understand where color coloring on a tiger goes. So it like that's again that's not my goal is to make it look just like the picture. <laughs> it's just a disclaimer. <laughs> It may take a long time, but in the end, the tiger stripes, I'd say they look pretty cool. <laughs> Again, I'm thankful for this brand new black pencil because like, if I didn't have it, my hand would be hurting so much right now. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't have drawn this tiger if I didn't have this long pencil because I, I just couldn't do it with that short of a pencil. I still have those pencils. I never bought a pencil extender because the craft store didn't have it whenever I went, but like this is how small it was. Um, here's the new one. Uh, Jennifer, I use a metal pencil sharpener to sharpen my pencils for these videos. Uh, whenever I'm not recording videos and I'm just drawing on my own, I use a blade to sharpen these, and the blade is just an exacto knife. Uh, but I, I use this for convenience for making these videos because I don't really have that much time to sit and like perfect a tip or use a blade because it can be dangerous if I'm trying to rush it. But um, if you guys are buying pencil sharpeners for your Prismacolors, or if you plan on getting them, just don't get those plastic pencil sharpeners that you buy at like Office Max or the ones that are meant for just regular writing pencils. I wouldn't get those pencil sharpeners. They don't work as well, and they'll just end up eating, eating up your pencil, and you won't be very happy because you'll have wasted a lot of your pencil. I would recommend getting a metal one if you do want to use a handheld sharpener, a metal one like this. These are really nice. You can get these at craft stores. Um, another method is to use the blade like I was talking about. However, like if you're younger and watching this, I wouldn't recommend doing that because it can be dangerous as it involves a blade, but it's definitely the most efficient way to sharpen these pencils because you'll minimize the loss of the color and you can get a really sharp tip.
Uh, Robin, I am not like currently in a school that is like made for art. I just go to a public high school and they have art classes that are offered. I take the international baccalaureate art classes, which I mean, they're not very, they're not very based in instruction. It's mostly a class where I have time to work on my pieces. I have access to the art studio and all of its materials and I can talk to my art teacher. And a lot of it is studying art, like looking at art and writing about it and understanding what makes it good. And part of the requirements for the class is I, I have to have a portfolio that I send in along with a workbook, which is basically a sketchbook with writing. And those are some of the requirements. But like, I, I'm not, I'm currently a high school student, so I'm not like going to school specifically for art. I'm just going to school and art is something that I do. Okay, now I'm going to move on to color more with the orange after I got all the stripes out of the way. Oh, Robin, to answer your question, what would you like to do when you grow up? Um, I'm not entirely sure of a career goal yet, but I do have lots of interests that I want to explore. And I know that right now I want to major in computer science because there's a lot to be done there and it's really interesting to me. So I want to major in it and from there, like, I'll take a career path. I don't know exactly what it is yet. Honestly, like all, almost all computer science jobs interest me because you can do really cool things with computers. But you know, again, like I'm not entirely certain on a career path, but I know I'll, I'll know it whenever I get it. Because who knows? Maybe the job I want doesn't even exist yet. I'm really happy with this Tuscan red, pale vermilion, and orange combination. Um, these three colors, they seem to be going really well together for the tiger. So if you guys ever want to like, color a tiger, use these colors, uh, just Prismacolor orange, uh, pale vermilion, and Tuscan red. 
these colors, they just work really well for the tiger's color. One thing I don't think I've mentioned in this video yet, but for those of you who are curious, the paper that I'm using is Strathmore Toned Gray paper. Uh, I prefer using this paper with Prismacolors because it really makes the colors pop. Um, I just really like the neutral gray in the background. It's nice because it, it's different than the generic white paper. It, it's a lot of fun to use, and if you haven't tried it yet, I would strongly recommend trying it for yourself. You can get it at craft stores such as Hobby Lobby and Michaels. It's really cheap. You can buy it in a spiral notebook, which is pretty nice. Uh, they also have it on Amazon, so if you'd like it, you should go order some for yourself. Uh, Kermit, this paper is toned gray paper by Strathmore. You can get it at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, and Amazon. Uh, Kermit, I do not trace what I'm drawing. I just I look at a picture and I draw it and then I color it.
Uh, Shannon, if you'd like to buy these drawings that I make, you can. Just contact me on Instagram through direct message. Uh, but to answer your question, what, what happens to these drawings whenever I'm done with them, they just stay in my sketchbook until someone buys them. Um, I've had someone purchase one before, so like, I will definitely sell it to you. Just make sure you contact me on direct message. And if you don't have Instagram, you can contact the Quirky Mama page and they will forward messages to me and I will get back with you. So just make sure you leave your email. Uh, Jennifer, if you can't send a direct message on Instagram, you can send a direct message or a private message to the Quirky Mama page and they will forward it to me. Uh, make sure you leave your email and I'll get back with you. Uh, Mary asks, what do you do if you make a mistake? Whenever I make a mistake while coloring Prismacolors, well, first of all, I just hope that the mistake isn't too bad, like, it's just something small, like, getting out of line. No, the first thing that I try to do is I try to lighten or soften the color so I can, like, draw over it or turn it into something new. Um, to do that, I use something called a gum eraser. You can get these at craft stores, spelled G-U-M. These things, they don't work that well with graphite from my experiences, but my friend told me that you can use it as a blender with Prismacolors, and I tried that and it works really well. Uh, what it does is it, it can lighten the color somewhat, to some degree. It's not too much, but in the slightest. It's really difficult to erase Prismacolors, but I say that this is like one of the best ways to do it. Although you're not really erasing it, you're just softening it so you can color over it with something else or change it. Uh, hopefully the mistakes that are made are with a lighter color, not with black or brown or something really dark that's hard to undo. But if it's white and it's colored very lightly, you can actually get away with just using a like a typical eraser from a mechanical pencil to soften some of the colors. But like curving mistakes with Prismacolors can be really difficult because really there's no way to actually erase them, but most of the time the best way to get around mistakes is to get creative and turn the mistake into something good or just like shape around it uh, like for example if a, if like I got the hair I mean it's really hard to think of an example right now but uh, usually whenever I make a mistake I try to turn it into part of the piece and or like do a lot of things around it to where hopefully no one notices
Uh, Trina, the gum eraser is not the same as the kneaded eraser. The kneaded eraser is more like a putty, although it's not very sticky, that you can like morph into different shapes. This is a hard little cube. Um, it's actually really easy to break apart, I think. I, I wouldn't recommend trying that, but it just feels like I could easily tear it apart. Um, but no, those are two different things. The kneaded eraser, those are really nice whenever you're working with uh, just graphite pencil or charcoal, things like that. But with these, uh, I don't really know what their intended purpose is. I just, like, I always find one in these art kits that I buy, and I ended up using them for blending pencils, or colored pencils, that is. Right now, I'm using Tuscan Red to detail some of the hairs on the tiger's nose. I saw I'd tell you guys this right now. Um, I'm just making small little etches on it. They're horizontal lines. And from a distance, all these little edges, they add up and it creates a texture of fur. Since the tiger's hair isn't that long right here, the little uh, horizontal lines, they do a good job at illustrating the hair. Sandra, that's very true. I think that applies to a lot of artists is that the artists themselves is their worst critic because whenever you're working on a piece of art up close for hours, it's really easy to spot every flaw with it and like, you know, like dislike a piece that you made, but most people, they won't notice your mistakes. And I guess that's one thing that you have to put into perspective whenever you're making art is that like, most people won't notice these mistakes, and your piece will be okay with the mistakes. Uh, just like people, like, there's flaws in paintings as well, and, like, I guess you just learn to accept them, and just by looking at flaws, you can see that, like, it's evidence that someone was there, someone made this, I mean, someone made a mistake, but that's okay. But yeah, sometimes I can get really caught up over, like, mistake or something that just doesn't look right, but in reality, it isn't that noticeable, so I shouldn't worry about it as much. So, like, my advice to you is, like, don't get caught up over your mistakes. They're inevitable. Uh, Kathy, uh, first of all, how old is your granddaughter? I'm just curious for, like, I guess just understanding the situation. So I almost forgot to color in the ears. That would have been tragic. I don't think that was visible on the camera, sorry guys. 
Yeah, if I start coloring something and you guys can't see what it is I'm coloring because it's like cut off from the video's frame, like, please tell me. <laughs> I may not notice it at first. Cafe for your daughter who's 16 years old, and that's how old I am as well, um, who started drawing but she, I guess, just didn't go through with it or like, she stopped doing it. Um, one thing that I would first say is that drawing isn't everyone's favorite. And what I would recommend doing is not just pressuring her to get back into drawing, per se, but expose her to different mediums like painting or sculpture or like collage work things like that just different forms of art and I, I would say that a good way to do that is to take trips to a museum or an art show something like that and just expose her to different types of art because art isn't just limited to drawing and painting and coloring there's a lot more to it there's sculpture installation collage work all this great stuff and there's a lot of great artists in these fields and like they keep needing more artists to do these things so like first of all like like I said don't just limit her to drawing or just like hope that she only does drawing I would just start with taking her to a museum and go from there I think that museum trips are great for a lot of people even if you're not an artist yourself like go to museums it's good for your soul Uh, Victoria brings up another good point for you, Kathy. Um, buy her supplies. Uh, a lot of times, like, if you're using the same old art supplies, it can get kind of exhausting. But like a fresh new start with art supplies, that, that can be really reviving and it, it's really nice. So yeah, I would definitely recommend doing that as well. Um, I would also say get her a sketchbook or a notepad, something where she can write down ideas and maybe draw like artistic inspiration from them. Uh, a sketchbook is always a good thing to have for a lot of people, like, even if you're a sculptor or anything like that. A sketchbook is great because you can write down your ideas and work on them and things like that. So yeah, that, that's good advice to all parents watching this. Like, I would strongly recommend getting your kids a sketchbook. A sketchbook is a great thing for them to have so they can explore their own artistic ideas and they can also have like a little record of their artistic skill at that point in their life. Uh, I have a bunch of sketchbooks from whenever I was younger. Um, in the next video for Quirky Mama that I'll be doing for you guys, I'll actually be showing you my sketchbooks uh, from middle school all the way up to now. And I think it'll be really cool to, to discuss it with you guys and like, show you guys like, what I did in middle school and how it progressed into what I do today.
Uh, Sandra asks, do you ever have issues getting them to blend together in reference to the pencils? Um, I say sometimes yes. Uh, I've found out that some colors, they just blend easier than others. Like, for example, the white and the gray, I always like have the most ease with blending. However, whenever I'm trying to blend black into something else, that can be really difficult because black is so dark. Uh, to get around that though, I would recommend like just like, if you're blending from black to something else, like, just progressively get lighter with the pressure that you apply with the pencil until you get like to the lightest point where you can barely tell that there's a colored pencil there and then proceed to blend it. Otherwise, like, it's really difficult to blend a like, straight black into a different color. But usually black is the only color that I have a lot of difficulty with blending sometimes because it's just so dark that like, it's really difficult to blend it into other things. Okay, it's 10.29, one minute until nine, um, until 10.30, and then I have to go. Uh, one thing I didn't get to finish on this tiger were the whiskers, and it's something that I think is really cool. So once I finish it, I will show you guys at the very beginning of, of the next video, which will be sometime next week. I don't know exactly on the date, but keep checking back. And um, on that video, I'll be showing you guys my sketchbook, and I guess like my evolution through art from middle school up until now. I think it'd be really fun to show you guys my sketchbook, so I'll be doing that. I know in the past few videos you guys have been talking about that, and you guys are excited to see that, so I can't wait to show you. Um, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I really appreciate all the lovely comments you leave. So I'll see you next time. Oh, and follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. The link to that is in the video's description. Bye!